Some of my favorite mythology in video games is that of Silent Hill. With that in mind, today Game Ranks brings you 10 Silent Hill facts. Number 10, Silent Hill is actually based on a real town, Centralia, Pennsylvania. Centralia is a town that's kind of scary. There's actually quite a few places in Centralia, like desolate landscapes, cemeteries all over the place. There's more buried people in Centralia than there are living residents. That's real. And believe it or not, I got this information from Centralia P. .org, which labels itself as info and photos from Centralia, Pennsylvania. There's a mine fire underneath it that has been burning literally for over 50 years. That mine fire heats underground water to boiling point, so basically anywhere where there's a fissure in the ground, steam comes out. Now, I'm not one who believes in ghosts or anything like that, but I am still also easily spooked and would probably stay the hell out of Centralia, Pennsylvania. Number nine, the composer that made the music for Silent Hill, Akira Yama. Yameoka created one of the coolest soundtracks to a horror game to this day. But you may be surprised to find out that that's not the only soundtrack he's famous for. If you remember Rocket Knight Adventures or Sparkster, depending on what system you played it on, he was actually the composer behind all of that music, and it was so bright and fun and actually really great music. Just totally different than Silent Hill in every possible way, though. But if you think about it, the flexibility necessary to create those soundtracks and the Silent Silent Hill soundtrack? Damn, Akira, you a musician. Number eight, the school in the original Silent Hill was actually based off of the school that was in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Kindergarten Cop. That school is actually Astoria Elementary School, which is in Astoria, Oregon. Now, the exterior is beyond obvious. If you look at a comparison between the two, no questions, none, zero. The entrance to both schools are just the same, period. But the interior in the movie movie was actually filmed at John Jacob Astor Elementary School, which is different. And also the interiors are a little less similar, mainly taking their cues from posters that are hung in the school in Kindergarten Cop. If you go in thinking too much about that, it totally ruins Silent Hill. Start looking around and you're like, who is your daddy and what does he do? It's just, it's too much for me. Number seven, the most iconic thing about Silent Hill was designed to disguise load times, essentially. Now, it's a little bit of a roundabout way to say that it disguises load times, but hear me out. What a lot of people will say is that the game can't handle all the polygons on screen at once, but if you've seen later PlayStation games, you know that it can. What it can't do is load the entire thing quickly. So instead of bothering with the whole, let's sit here and wait for the bomb to drop, awful load times, believe me, on the PlayStation there are some pretty nasty load times. They decided to just make it so that the system loaded less of the world world at a time. Where everyone else was trying to avoid doing something like that and hiding or obscuring everything in the game, Silent Hill embraced it as a means to speed up the mechanics of the game and make it work better. And it just ended up being possibly one of the coolest visual effects in any game ever, period. Number six, a number of restaurants in Japan were for a time serving Silent Hill themed ramen. Back in 2013, Konami partnered with a bunch of restaurants in Japan to serve what looked like a decaying, awful, rotting ramen noodle. Now that sounds unsavory, but in all actuality, a lot of people said it was very good. It's served in oil that makes it look old and dingy with a tomato filled with meat that ruptures and kind of ends up looking like something dead. Now it's apparently a very salty dish and not for the faint of stomach, if only for the looks. Honestly, I saw it and didn't think it was that disgusting looking. For whatever reason, it actually kind of looks fairly appetizing to me. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. Number five, the underground fire that's burning and creating all the steam in the town of Centralia, Pennsylvania that I mentioned in the first point actually happened in real life because officially the town burnt garbage and they did it every year on Memorial Day to avoid the town from being overrun with garbage and garbage smell. One year the fire was not properly extinguished and it spread to abandoned underground coal mines and it's been going ever since. Now, this is way back in 1962 which is a long time. Number four, the text in Mary's letter to Laura, believe it or not, is actually just the lyrics to the seminal Bon Jovi hit, Blaze of Glory. And the way you see that is by simply zooming in on the letter itself. It's not immediately obvious, but if you spend some time analyzing it, it does indeed say, I'm going down in a blaze of glory. Take me out 
but know the truth. I'm going out in a blaze of glory. Lord, I never drew first, but I drew first blood. I'm no one's son, call me young gun. And I actually can't make out the signature, but I think it says sincerely yours. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite things about Silent Hill. Cause whatever you think about Bon Jovi, that is a primo inclusion. Number three, the fantastic warning from Silent Hill Shattered Memories is actually real. It does actually kind of psychologically profile you as you play. But the best part of that is indeed the last line of the warning. This game plays you as much as you play it. And while that may be a little bit of an exaggeration or perhaps some attempt at branding, that stuck with me. I remember reading that and going, oh geez, what am I in for? Shattered Memories wasn't exactly the best out of the Silent Hill games, but it did actually take into account some of your actions. For instance, how you answer questions and even how long you look at risque posters. Number two, this one I don't think is that hard to believe, but is very interesting nonetheless. Silent Hill had a lot of difficulty getting past sensors outside of Japan, specifically the gray child monster, which was designed to basically be a nude child that wielded a knife. Now that itself was not only deemed too graphic, but you also could kill them. So in essence, you could kill children in the game. And back in the 90s, that was a little bit more controversial than it is now. They had to change it to be a faceless gray, larger version of the monster for American audiences in order to get the game published here. What cracks me up is that the problem was that you were killing these children and not that there are nude children in the game. Or at least that was the main part of the problem. Well, the nude children part was kind of a secondary issue. Number one in Silent Hill 2. The ending music from the rebirth ending, it's a little creepy but at the same time kind of fun and nice. <laughs> I don't know why, I always found it kind of weirdly soothing after you beat that game. It's not necessarily comforting or anything, but it's kind of nicer than the rest of the game. But if you reverse it, it actually is terrifying. It contains the prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. But for whatever reason, if you listen to it in reverse, it's just, ah, it's terrifying. In fact, everything about Silent Hill is terrifying. There are times when it keeps me up at night, just because I remembered Silent Hill that day. There's such good games that seriously outdo so many games that came after them, including games in its own series. And I have such a fondness for the weird lore of those games. Let's share some Silent Hill experiences in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you again next time right here on Game Ranks.